Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy, the Knight of Justice. And today, I've been meaning to cover this character for a long time. He is one of the most powerful entities within the Marvel Universe, and one people don't really seem to understand how powerful he is. I've seen some videos on Amatsumi Kiboshi, and they are pretty impressive, but I will do my own video on Amatsumi Kiboshi and go in more depth into his feats and where he skills with the Marvel Universe. But with that, let's get into it. Amatsumi Kiboshi, the Chaos King, is the personification of the void that existed before creation and the manifestation of oblivion, the complete abstract embodiment of non-existence. Once believed to be a simple mere deity called Amatsumi Kiboshi by the Japanese pantheon, he is in fact far greater of an entity and purely a more force that is unraveled in nature. The Chaos King is an enriched being whose sole goal is to end all of existence, and as such, he is the anti god who exists in direct opposite to the lights of multi eternity, Gaia, and the forces of existence that created creation. The deity's first appearance was during Ares' miniseries around the time of the god of war had been banished from Olympus and began living on Earth with his demigod son, Alexander Aaron. During the start of the comic, he is summoned back to Mount Olympus and learns of what has been going on. The Greeks have been having a long battle against Matsumi Kiboshi and his forces, and they require Ares' assist assistance. Ares at the time was friendly against his siblings and would have let them die all die at the hands of Matsumi Kiboshi. Though it would have happened that Matsumi Kiboshi had his son held captive, so he agreed to fight alongside them to get his son back. Later during the Olympian battles with the entity, Amatsu showed his power beyond regular Sky Father level beings as he casually overpowered and mortally wound Zeus. After their defeat and retreat, the Japanese god Aridar appeared wishing to form an alliance between his pantheon and the Olympian pantheon and explained that Amaku Mikaboshi has killed most of his family. As the war continued, Throughout the issue, the Olympians are, fam are firmly defeated thanks to Amatsu Mikiboshi's overwhelming power, and Ares' son Alexander, who had, who had been brainwashed and given godlike powers and was wielding the sword grass cutter. In the end of the storyline, he is defeated, and by the combination of might of the remaining Olympian gods and Kami, and by being sliced in half by Alexander's grass cutter. Amatsumi Kiboshi's appearance continued within Incredible Hercules comic book, most significantly during the Secret Invasion arc. Within the storyline, the Athenian pantheon summoned up the, God, the Council of Godheads to defend Earth from the Skrull invasion, deciding that the best way to do so would be to destroy the Skrull deities. As according to her, the invasion was being waged during, due to an interruption of the scroll scared book the deities agreed in each pantheon appointed a champion athena chose hercules and amadeus chose as her champions the other deities selected their champions when it came down to amatsu kami of japan selected amatsu mikaboshi as their representative so that he may redeem himself one of the group's first obstacles occurred when they ended up within the dimension of dreams and Nightmare trapped each member of the group within a machineless vice designed to absorb their greatest fears. It worked for every member, even the elder god Atum, but failed to affect Amatsu Mikaboshi. At the end of the story, the scroll deities are defeated, and during the battle, Amatsu had faked his death to free himself from Kami. He then takes over the religious scrolls. And Athena is revealed to be controlled by him too. Amatsu Mikaboshi's appearance continued within the story, which the direct coincidence of events of Ares, among other arcs. Here we get a recap of him killing Zeus in the issue, as well as a showing of what's been happening up currently, him killing the entire Shi'ar pantheon. And finally, and more importantly, Amatsu's true nature is extended upon if 
the screen of nightmares been seen weird with him as just a scoffer level deity he has now been confirmed to be much more Harris states this coming the chaos and nothingness that was all and that was ever willed before the gods come now to destroy us the Japanese gave a name to it Amatsu Mikaboshi she also later explains the origin of the universe in regards to various ages of humanity she says that in the beginning the world was without form and the void and you can clearly see Amatsu's face on the background as the void we get a few mentions later on of the two comments that are too small for each to gain a notable, a notable understanding of, or just not much mentioning, but we get an explanation of the grass cutter sword and the belief recapped on the War of Olympian Gods with Amatsu Mikaboshi on how the sword was made for that um, Ares' son, Alexander, to wield against Amatsu Mikaboshi. Now that we got a brief explanation on Amatsu Mikiboshi's background and the preludes leading up to Chaos War, let's get into Chaos War. The Chaos War starts when the Chaos King is attacking the gods of Zen La, you know, the home world of the Silver Surfer and its gods. We have a narrative of Zen La's religion explaining more of who the Chaos King truly is. In the beginning, there was not there was everything and nothing. Is this was a chaotic state where darkness and time were one the elements were individed were undivided the laws of physical unfound it was an infinite confusion there was no room to think it is in the neon star it was exploited by the first mover that the neon star was a herald the end of time a select a sentinel and trove that seek absolute chaos and to end order where they can't tell you tell up from down because there is no up or down in which in a foundationalist state in which no pattern can be recognized the deities of zen line do the do battle with the chaos king though they are easily defeated and destroyed there are plenty of there's plenty of other dialogue explaining who Omatsu Mikaboshi truly is, though we did get background on who he was, but it goes further more in depth of his true nature. Others have fought me, countless gods from other worlds, now they fight me for fight for me. All gods must end so the greater thing can start, the oblivion. Do not resist me, I am in insurmountable, the end of all things. So, in this battle here, he's not really trying to kill these guys, but put them under his influence to make an army. That's what the Chaos King does. He can corrupt beings and turn them again, and turn them into a, his own personal army, affecting with his power, giving them a lot more power up, and putting them under his control. After the defeat and him putting him into his ranks, the Chaos King heads to Earth to destroy all of its forces. But before he does, he goes to start with devouring hell. He goes to hell and easily destroy all of his all of his forces, all of Satan's forces combined. Some other feats that the Chaos King has done is be able to one-shot Nightmare pretty easily. Later, Skyfather Hercules arrives from where he has been banished during the events of Assault on New Olympus storyline, and he warns the Earth's heroes about who Amatsu Mikiboshi is and the threat he poses. Meanwhile, during this, Amatsu invades the Roman underworld of Pluto, where now dead Greek deities reside, and, he, and so he kills Zeus and other deities once again that have fought him prior. So going off of this in this video, we haven't really seen the full extent of what Matsumi Boshi has done, but going off the defeats he's shown up until now, due to the fact that Matsumi Boshi is able to kill numerous Skyfather level beings, ones including Zeus, and he was even a threat to the likes of the Hell Lords and, and Fear Lords, powerful beings such as Hella, Satan, and even Nightmare, he, he would be at this point and the storyline be low multiversal to multiversal plus scaling off of the likes of Zeus, Hela, Odin of course, and Nightmare. 
And I have said numerous times how powerful the likes of Odin, Mephisto, or even Hela is on my other previous videos. But if you guys are new, I will give a brief recap on their feats. During Journey into Mystery, we have the most infinite feat where a weakened Odin was able to fight against an Amp Seth, and they were destroying galaxies, affecting every single plane of existence where their fight was echoing through every single plane of existence, and they were destroying the very fabric of the Marvel Multiverse. Odin, while fighting with Zeus, was casually capable of shaking the infinite embassy as a side effect which stands on the top and governs all realities. Hela, who's amongst one of the Hell Lords, she is quite a rival to Mephisto when it comes to souls and pretty much everything else. It is even said that Hela's battle against Mephisto would make Ragnarok pale in comparison, and it even would cause an omniversal Armageddon. Mephisto, while in Hela is also able to defeat Blackheart, who is the son of Mephisto, and Blackheart in Hell was able to overthrow his father and became the new ruler of Hell, and planned to remake Hell in his own image. Through her power, Hela is able to create a sword capable of slaying Odin and make even Asgard tremble. One of Odin's other well-known feats is when, when Surtur died, his flame was going to destroy the lights of Yggdrasil and Otherworld, and it would also have consumed all realities. Odin comes in and is able to nullify this fire. As we all know by now, as I said repeatedly over and over again, the Asgardian world tree known as Yggdrasil is kind of like a map. The nine realms or ten realms you recognize as being part of Yggdrasil are just a tip of a maybe infinite iceberg. What you know as worlds are also are known as universe fully formed and complex. Other statements say that to save the world tree was stated to, to save all worlds. We didn't save one world, we saved all worlds. We didn't save one reality, but all realities. When Seth attacked Yggdrasil, he states, I launched my most recent attack on Yggdrasil, the world tree, the world ash, the tree of life, has three main roots, but it exists across every plane of reality. Other statements say that the roots of the world tree of Yggdrasil, its roots and branches connect all the worlds. It binds the cosmos as it grows. Even when Loki saw the full totality of Yggdrasil, Loki saw infinite Asgards, and also in his conversation with Baldur, there are infinite Lokis, or better yet, there are many Lokis, just as there are many Thors, many Baldurs, each one exists apart from one another, yet is conjoined by a shared existence, like branches on a tree. In one iteration, Loki is called Lok, in some, he's called Log. And still in other, he's called Loki or Load, Loader, <laughs> or Lokes. So, going off of these few feats that have been said, Amatsu Mikiboshi at this point in story launch should at least be low multiversal to high into multiversal plus. Possibly higher, give or take. But once the Chaos King has came to Earth, he started causing multiple calamities across the world to the point where Skyfather Hercules decided to summon an ally to aid them in battle. With his newfound godly power, he straight up is able to summon one of the top dogs, Eternity. Though he is able to summon Eternity, Eternity explains he is not able to help them. Eternity says that he cannot aid them in battle and explains that the Chaos King is the darkness and the chaos that exists before creation itself. He is the anti-god. The void against which I am defined. He and I, while walk hand in hand, if I fight him, I'll be fighting myself. So, this will most likely be confirmed that the Chaos King is equal to the lights of multi eternity, as the Chaos King is seeking to destroy the entire multiverse in this entire storyline. And as we know by now, the Marvel multiverse has shown to have infinite countable infinite higher dimensions many times over while eternity is, is himself embodies the totality of all creation all planes and all level of creation within himself some examples of edge space edge subspace is referred to having the inf crossroads of infinity which in this version 
houses infinite higher dimensions, infinite and countless dimensions within it. Some versions of the Cosmic Cube, which the Cosmic Cube does vary in power, but there are some iterations that can destroy infinite dimensions. In Quasar's solo series, Infinity and Oblivion fought on a metaphysical plane, and they were fighting so hard, and the, they were fighting each other so evenly, that it would affect the highest plane of reality. These two abstract beings are able to fight on the highest plane of reality. And they were just embodies. There are also explained to be infinite levels within the multiverse. And even in the likes of Strange Tales, where Clash's Doctor Strange rolls out his original power, was able to hold back all levels of infinity within the Marvel multiverse, within creation itself, from collapsing. So this could be clearly be high in the high high reversal. But continuing, the Chaos King was such a threat that even Death herself has fled from this event. So that so that's the reason why no one was able to die, is that Death herself left. <laughs> so that she wouldn't be threatened by the Chaos King. But even with this happening, more things happen within the comic where Hercules summoned the Galact lights of Galactus and the Silver Server asked for help. Mostly for Galactus. And now, brainwashed Greek deities fight the heroes Hercules defeats Zeus and he opens the portal to the Council of God at the Council of Godhead at complete and utter anger of their incompetence and what their incompetence has caused. But in doing this this rash decision, he allows the Chaos King to invade the realm of deities and he destroys Maya upon uh, underworld, the Steelton Otherworld and other and more realms within this dimension where the gods were at. There are more feats and statements later on within the Chaos War that and also tie-ins that explain what the Chaos King is. For example, the Silver Surfer explains that the Chaos King, my master Galactus, is a force of nature. He needs he feeds only on the period to satiate his hunger. But the Chaos King is something immensely greater. His very existence blatantly defies every law of the universe. He will not stop until all reality is consumed. He is the end of all that is. Entropy, oblivion, darkness. There are also more and other statements and showings about the Chaos King. Doctor Strange explains of who the Chaos King is, the embodiment of darkness sworn to return everything to the chaos that exists before creation itself. After their crushing defeat by the Chaos King in issue 3, Hercules and Cho and others manage to survive and teleport to Hawaii where various deities are taking refuge. It's here that we get the infamous quote that the Chaos King has destroyed 98.76% of the Marvel Multiverse. Furthermore, Gaia herself is dying due to the Chaos King's destruction of reality. She explains to Hercules that she was the first being to spawn from the Void. And as such, the source of all gods and all of and of creation itself. The only way for Chaos King to be stopped would be for Hercules to inhibit all her power, and so he does. With this power from Gaia that he inherited from her, he's able to fight the Chaos King in their final battle. Though Hercules is still grossly overpowered and can only temporarily hold him off. And seeing as they have no real way of winning against the Chaos King, Amadeus Cho forms another strategy in which the heat of the moment lets him win. So they manage to just barely throw the Chaos King into another universe completely excluded from the Marvel Universe and seals him inside of it. The Chaos King takes complete control over it, believing to have become one with nothingness and is satisfied with the place he is in. And with that problem solved, Hercules then used all the last remaining of his power to heal the entire Marvel Universe into what it once was. It is also worth noting that in Thor Annual of 2012, Issue 2, it is, it is revealed by Oblivion that Amatsu Mikaboshi is the Chaos King and is just one fragment of Oblivion's infinitesimal being. But now that we got this far into the video, I bet you guys are wondering how powerful the Chaos King is. 
Well, going off of feats, statements, scaling, and narrative, the Chaos King of Matsumi Kiboshi should at least be high in a high hype reversal, too likely 1A if you were to consider he just an infinitesimal part of Oblivion. There are some other reasons why you could try to argue him to be in 1A, but I will not mention in this in this video. It is just safe to say that he is like really high in a high hype reversal, and likely 1A. But that's been the end of the video. There will be a video on Sentry to coming out. I know I had promised to put it out after I did Man Thing, but I decided to do the Chaos King just to get him out of the way. But Sentry is coming out soon. But if you like the video, please hit like, share, and subscribe, and also comment down below. Hit the notification for more videos. Um, follow me on my Twitter. Um, join Discord if you want to like get in touch with friends or want to hang out or learn about the scaling, comics, anime, etc. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.